Hello everyone, it's Lindsay, and today I'm working on a 6x8 layout for Felicity Jane. So I have a whole bunch of pieces from the um, Amber kit that I'm going to be using, that's the November kit. And so I just wanted to pop on here and kind of explain what I've already prepped ahead of time before I dive into working on the page. So this is an 85 by 11 piece of cardstock. I will cut it down. I'm going to ink up the background with some Distress Oxide inks. Um, and I am documenting this photo of my boys. This is way old. This is from 2012. Um, it's one of my favorite, favorite photos of them. And when I was looking at the Amber Kit, um, I thought of this photo because I've never scrapped it before. And the colors really work well with the Amber Kit with those oranges and yellows and a little bit of green. And so I thought this would be perfect. And so I thought I'd jump on to Silhouette Studio Store and there was this leaf cut file from Felicity Jane. So I'll put the ID number down below if you're wanting to grab this one for yourself. Um, but I went ahead and sized it down to where it would work on a six by eight layout, cut it out of some textured white cardstock. And then I manipulated the file in Silhouette Studio. That way I could also cut out the leaf pieces that are going to back this cut file out of a bunch of papers from the amber kit and that was just a matter of releasing the compound path and adding a little bit of a um, border to those shapes that way it'll fit behind here i have some silhouette studio um, tutorials i'll link those down below if you have some questions about how to do do that and then on this page here this is some really nice thick 110 pound cardstock and I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it because I've left it on the paper but um, there's this cut file from Felicity Jane that says live in the moment and this is gonna be my title so I've actually cut it out three separate times because I'm gonna layer it up to add some dimension and the topmost layer I've left it um, in this page because I think I'm gonna ink it up with some distress oxide inks um, that way it's not plain white I'm gonna add some color to it and it'll be easier to do if it's left um, on this sheet. So that's going to be my title and then I'm just going to pull in some other bits and bobs from the Amber collection and things like that as we work but I just wanted to kind of show you what I've um, prepped and then I will go ahead and um, start on the background and then start adding in those pattern papers behind the cut file and we'll just we'll get going. So let me go ahead and put you on fast forward and we'll put together this layout. Okay, so I'm going to start by prepping my cardstock with some transparent watercolor ground, and this is just going to reinforce the paper so it can take all of the like water and stuff that I'm going to put on it. And I just like that this performs a little bit better than gesso as far as with inks and paints and things like that. So I'm applying it with a palette knife and I'm not being careful. I am being really messy. I don't want perfect coverage. I want some thicker areas and some thinner areas to create a lot of texture for that ink to kind of sit on and I don't know, just enhance the textures in the background. So it is nice and thick. Now this texture paste says to let it sit and cure for 24 hours and not to use a heat tool, but I'm a rebel and I dry it with my heat tool and it worked out just, <laughs> just fine. So I'm going to use the ink smushing technique. So I have some plastic packaging here and then I have a few colors of ink and I'm just going to smush the ink out on the packaging spray it with some water, spray my paper with some water, and then smush that ink down. And because this ink reacts with water, it just moves and blends. And because it's on top of that watercolor ground, it doesn't just instantly sink into the fibers of the paper. You have some time to move it around and smush it and, um, I don't know, just let lots of the texture kind of move around. So I do go ahead and dry in between the layers of color. That way they layer rather than mix. So I'm going in with scattered straw first. Now I'm going in with tattered rose, which is a really pale pink and adding that. And I'm kind of concentrating everything in the bottom left-hand corner, sort of, since that's where my photo and the leaves and things are going to go. Once again, dry that. Now I'm going to go in with a deeper color. This is Gathered Twigs, I believe. Or no, Frayed Burlap. Frayed Burlap has this really pretty greens that come out when you dry it. So um, I'm going to smush this down. And I'm trying to be careful not to add too much of this. And I put quite a bit of water on there to dilute it. At this point, I'm kind of going, I don't know about this background. This is really messy and scary. So um I go back in, dry it, go back in with some of the pink. Now, because these are distressed oxide inks, they have a pigment 
property. And so it allows you to layer light inks on top of dark inks a little bit. So I'm able to bring in a little bit more of that pink. Then I lay the leaves down to decide if I'm gonna leave them white, if I'm going to color them. I'm kind of trying to stage and see because I'm a little unsure about that background. Um, I do need to cut it down because I did work on an eight and a half by 11 and I'm actually journaling in a, or scrapbooking in a six by eight album. So it's kind of funny looking back at this, I liked the eight and a half by 11. So I'm thinking after the six by eight album, I might be moving into eight and a half by 11. I, I don't know, I just feel like I need even more space than the six by eight, which is silly. So I'm cutting this down. And at this point I'm like, oh my gosh, there's a lot more ink on this um, than I initially thought. I probably should have cut down and worked on a six by eight originally because um, this didn't leave a whole lot of white space like it was going to. And the leaves take up quite a bit down there. So I'm, I'm just kind of questioning things at this point. I was really unsure. Um, but I stick with it and in the end I'm happy with how it came out. So I do end up off camera trimming my photo down even more. Um, I believe it's a three by four at this point and I cut it down a little bit. So I decided that the leaves need some contrast. So I'm going in with that same um, frayed burlap ink and some, a makeup brush. This is just a dollar makeup brush from the dollar store and I'm just brushing it over the leaves. I'm wanting it to be kind of splotchy, not perfect, darker in areas, lighter in some of the areas. Um, and this is going to help some of the contrast um, when I put the papers behind it because some of those papers were pretty light colored and so they weren't really popping behind the white um, cardstock. So I've flipped it over at this point. So I'm working on the back side and just adding a little bit of adhesive. And I'm not going too crazy, just enough so that the um, little die cut leaf pieces can stick to the back and then I can start kind of paper piecing the um, papers on the back. And I actually, like in Silhouette Studio, colored these, the colors of the paper and arranged them to figure out which ones were gonna be which papers. And I, it, it was a little OCD, but <laughs> so now it's just going in and trying to match up where the leaves came from. And it's a little bit difficult because you're working, you know, on the back side, which is the black and white of these papers, but you can kind of tell based off of the patterns, whether you've got, you know, something in the wrong, wrong spot there. So now I can go ahead and just add adhesive all over the back of this piece and stick it down to my layout. And I even off camera kind of fussed with maybe not using the inked up background and just placing this piece on a white piece of cardstock because I felt like it was a little busy, um, but I, I stuck with it. I stuck with it. This was way out of my comfort zone. So, and I'm super, super new to even working on six by eight layouts or scrapbooking in general. So all of this, I like overthink way too much. <laughs> But I commit, I stick it down um, anywhere where it doesn't have really good adhesion with the cut file. I'm just going in with a, a glue pen and just adding a little bit more adhesive. That way nothing you know moves around or pops up. Um, I do put these into page protectors in the album, so it, it should be fine. And then I can trim off the excess. And it's at this point that I kind of go, okay, I'm, I'm settling on this background and how it's coming together. It's, it's coming coming along it's always a little bit nerve-wracking when you do a mixed media background so my photo is pretty dark so I'm trying to figure out what to map behind it that's gonna help it I don't know stand out from the background but then not lose the photo tones so I'm going through all of the papers from the amber kit and just kind of trying them out and so I settle on this diagonal black and white um, so it's, it's neutral, it's not a color, but it adds just enough texture to kind of break things up a little bit so that the photo doesn't get lost in the mess of the background. And I'm just gonna do a little bit of this peeking out. And then I also am gonna add in some tissue paper behind there to again, just help break up that photo from the background. And as I'm looking at this, I'm realizing my photo, it's slightly smaller than three by four, is almost too big for this six by eight layout. So I don't know, I just, 
I need to work on something that gives me really big photos, um, but 12 by 12s are way too intimidating for me. So I don't know, over the next few months, you're probably gonna see me change my style and change my format quite a bit until I figure out what what's my comfort zone and what really works for me and, and what, I, what I like. So that's looking a little better, I'm committing. And I think that's gonna that's gonna work okay. So um, off camera, I went ahead and inked up that live in the moment piece. And when I laid it over the photo, that didn't work. There wasn't enough contrast. So I'm actually gonna use that green one as the bottom layer. And I'm just gonna stack these three sentiments up on top of each other. And so that way it almost creates like a chipboard effect. It gives it lots of dimension. And that way it really can kind of pop off the background. So I just leave the top most one white and that seems to work. So I've pulled out some other pieces from the Amber kit as well as like a little chipboard circle from a past kit. Um, my roller date stamp does not go back to 2012. So I've pulled out the bold number stamp set and I'm gonna stamp out the date. Um, I fussed with this too. I tried like three different stamp sets variety of stickers trying to figure out how I wanted the date because I did want the date on here because I wanted to remember when this was done um, these bold numbers I feel like were a little bold <laughs> for where this ended up I don't know maybe if I had gone with like a brown ink instead of a black ink it would have been better but I don't know maybe it works because it helps it stand out from all the background crazy I have one of the little rose gold paper clips from Felicity Jane just to add a little detail to that label up there at this point, it's just adding little finishing details. The majority of the layout is done and now it's just coming in and kind of dressing it up and adding the little tidbits. I'll go ahead and add some detail to that tag up there. And then I'm going to just commit. I'm gonna go for it. So, and my boys were five years old at this point. I cannot believe this is already so long ago. They were so, so cute and so, so small. And my dad no longer lives in that house and I'm so bummed because I had the most beautiful backyard. We did several family photo sessions in the backyard there and it was just so, so pretty. So you can see that white um, sentiment pops off a lot better off of the background there. And the little um, dots for the eyes, I ended up just gonna go in with a gel pen to add those details rather than the paper because it was just too small to fuss with. I have the um, washi tape that came in the amber kit, just gonna add some layering behind that label so it doesn't look like it's floating all by itself up there. And it also pulls in the black and white stripe from the um, paper behind the photo as well. And at this point I'm going, okay, all right, I'm glad I stuck with the background. I'm glad I stuck with that cut file has a lot of interest, totally out of my comfort zone, but I really like how it came out. So if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box for links to everything that I used in the video today. Head on over to the Felicity Jane blog for more up close photos of the project. Uh, give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.